Your next comedian coming up to the stage, hopefully will not have stage fear anymore. Please welcome Jerry Collar! Yeah! All right, folks. Listen, I live in Southside, Richmond, Virginia. I love living in Southside. There's just some businesses in Southside that I don't particularly care for. Like, there's this bowling alley on Melodian that I went to the other day. It's the most hood piece of shit that you can ever go to. I'll never go back to this bowling alley. Like, I go in there, they got 30 lanes. Now, out of the 30 lanes, only 10 of them worked. And I'm like, okay. But they only had, like, 20 bowling balls. We had to share bowling balls between families. I'm like, what the fuck is this? One bowling ball had four holes in it. I'm like, how the hell do I bowl with these four holes? And then the guy that worked there, he told me the last dude that was there got mad and he shot it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't even have the machine to return the ball to you. It's just a dude at the back of the lane that bowls it back up. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then, like, next to it is a pop up off of games. I'm not making this up. Go to Melodian. I go to this pop up thinking, alright, this might be better. Nope. Same old hood shit. I put like two quarters in one arcade, and the arcade next to it came on. <laughs> How the fuck does this shit happen? Like, and then I want to go play pop up golf. They didn't even have any more golf balls. They were using pool balls to play golf with. It was niggas out there hustling. Eight ball, caught a hole, double bogey. I was like, <laughs> now I refer to myself, well, I apologize. Whatever. Um, oh, fuck all y'all white people. Now, now before y'all jump, wait a minute. <laughs> No, something happened to me uh, recently that made me hate all white people for just that day. I don't hate you now, but you know, fuck all y'all just like emphasize the joke. But, <laughs> but I come outside and I trip up over my porch and there's like a three-year-old white girl on the sidewalk on her big wheel and she laughs. Ha ha ha, you fell. I'm thinking I'm playing with her. Ha ha, I see you fall off your stupid little big wheel all the time. Ha ha ha. And then she responds, ha ha ha, you're black. <laughs> and then, like, what the fuck? Like, I would have rather her called me the N word. I would have preferred her call me the N word. She just announced my natural race. Like, that was the insult. <laughs> so now I'm like, what the fuck are your parents teaching her? So I'm looking at her dad on his porch, not paying no attention. So I walk up and I kick that bitch off her big <laughs> And now she's crying and shit. Now her, now her dad gets involved. He didn't know I kicked her. He walks over and I'm like, oh, the baby girl fell down there. And her like, if you tell, I'll kill you and your mom. <laughs> they moved two weeks later. I want to say it's because of me. I don't know why, but... <laughs> Fuck that little bitch. <laughs> and her big will. <laughs> you broke it right. I should have taken that fucking... I should have broke it. You have to move it right. Or burned it or something. What? <laughs> White people? Alright. So I don't like uh, I don't like telemarketers. I get uh, I get this call from the telemarketer trying to sell me a timeshare at Disneyland and it wasn't even like super sweet. It was like twenty thousand dollars, right? Every year I can visit Disneyland for four days I can stay in one of their hotels. That's it. And I'm like for twenty fucking thousand dollars? That's that's all I can for twenty thousand I better be able to visit more than Disneyland. I better I better be able to visit Walt Disney's grave. Like, for $20,000 in my hotel, Mickey Mouse better make me breakfast. For $20,000, I better have a threesome with Minnie Mouse and Daisy Duck. <laughs> like, for real, like, could, could you just imagine this shit? Could you just, just, like, picture me and Daisy Duck <laughs> on the bed, trying to kiss, having trouble because her beak keeps biting me. <laughs> Minnie Mouse comes out of the shower, nothing but that red polka dot hair bow on. She climbs on the bed, she tries to bite Daisy Duck's panties off. She gets mad because Daisy forgot to shave. She got feathers all over her lips. Goofy's in the treehouse, she's recording it. He forgot to press record though. Well, I'm, I'm gonna stop right there with that, with that joke. I don't know where I was going. Um, whatever, sorry. I got, uh, there's one last joke I wanted to tell, I think. As soon as I can uh, start my phone back up, I see the light, and this joke is like 45 seconds as soon as I can get to it. Boom. Paul Bass is texting me. 
Uh, <laughs> he just texted me, I swear to God. Like, yeah, he's a white motherfucker too. He is a white motherfucker, that's why I'm not responding to him. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, see, I should have known that this joke was next because it was a segue. I was talking about fucking Minnie Mouse and Daisy Duck. Like, so the segue is, I really, I really don't care about like stuffed animals. I can never really fuck them, but I honestly used to masturbate to Betty Boo. Like, that's that's where the segue came in because she's like a cartoon character, but if she was real, like I would like love to get some 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 head from her. But then I thought like, damn, her head is kind of big. Like, what would it be like if she sucked my dick? Like. Every time she'd go up and down, like she'd headbutt me in the chin. Like, that's just like not sexy. I'm, I'm gonna just end it like that. Y'all have a good night. Johnny A. Toller. Enjoy the rest of the comedians. Johnny A. Toller, everybody. <laughs> Ruining Disney movies for the, all of us. Your next comedian. The man responsible for putting on this show Fortnite after Fortnite. The man who just ran back and I can't find him anymore. Please welcome to the stage. Give it up for Jesse Jarvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah McCormick's and shit. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this marathon of comedy fucking whatever. Uh, wait, you know what? Open the door. Open that smoke room door because I want, I want... I want the people in the back to hear truth. That's, that's my desire for tonight. Because you know what, um, McCormick's guys, I, uh, I'm a man who has dreams. I have dreams and aspirations, just like every one of you. Um, I think it would be fun to be a DJ in a male strip club. I think that's one of my dreams. That's my personal thing, you know? And, and, and not so I can play that song, let's hear it from the boys whenever the fuck I feel like. Not because of that. But because I just know that one day, while I'm in the DJ booth, I'm gonna get, get to utter the sentence, Hey! Looks like that middle-aged woman's enjoying her full frontal lap dance from Dom Cheadle. <laughs> He's one of our best dancers. Talk about getting hot flashes, hey -o! <laughs> Which, by the way, McCormick's dick joke, menopause joke, one sentence. You're welcome. <laughs> God damn it. But you know what? The recession's been hard on everybody, so you know you can't make it rain at the club like you used to. So you're just like shoving Groupon vouchers up through their g-string, <laughs> like, like hope you like Dave and Buster's. I'm just like, Fuck, mom, what are you doing in here? Are you fucking embarrassing me. God damn it. Fuck. I uh, I realize I'm never gonna be a sex symbol. I realize this. I had this realization at a 7-Eleven the other day. <laughs> That's when this happened. I and, and it's it's. And the realization is, all right, if you are standing in line with your drink that you bought from the 7-Eleven and you're struggling to get the plastic straw into the drink hole, that's not going to be appealing to the attractive woman standing behind you in line. She's going to be like, oh, God, like, if he's struggling to get that plastic straw in the hole, like, I'm totally not fucking that guy. That, that's understandable. Like, she's not being a bitch. That's just biology, you know? <laughs> like... Not, not if I was getting the whole, like the straw into the hole, like she was gonna fuck me anyway, you know, like just like standing there in line, all creepy, like. <laughs> huh? You like? There's plenty more where that came from. Her boyfriend fucking hated that. <laughs> Let me tell you about her boyfriend. Um, all right, and this is a public service announcement to all you guys out there. Uh, if you have long hair. And, uh, and you wear skinny jeans with your long hair, and uh, you wear flip-flops with your fucking skinny jeans. Um, you better have a French accent or something, because like that's just, that's just really sad and pathetic, that whole look. Because guys who wear flip-flops piss me off in general anyway, you know? It's just like, because when a guy has his, wears flip-flops, to me it's just, it's fucking rude, I think. Guys who wear flip-flops, fucking rude. Like, if I'm in a restaurant or something, and I see you wearing flip-flops, everything all of a sudden smells like hummus to me. And that works me out. It was like, uh, God. This, it, it, and, like, you could be some really nice guy. You do work for the Peace Corps, or you help, like, starving children in Africa or, or something. Like, it doesn't matter. You're going to look like a fucking asshole. And, but then, like, you know, then the guy opens his mouth. He's like, well, in France, you don't have to pay for health care. And... Blowjobs are publicly funded by fucking teachers unions. I'm like, okay, well, he's got a French accent. This makes sense. It's not me being pissy. It's just it's cultural difference. Whatever. Bullshit. 
I'm done telling that joke. That didn't fucking work. All right, let's talk about fast food. <laughs> Why not? All right, I think um, I, I see these commercials for fast food, and uh, they they get on my nerves because uh, they're trying to make it seem like fast food, like McDon like going to dinner on a date at McDonald's is now an acceptable date meal, which to me sounds like another one that white man's lies, but like. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, McDonald's night is now date night, which means McDonald's night is now fuck night. Which is bullshit. It's, it's, it, like, unless you're going to feed her four kids or something that aren't yours, she's not going to be impressed, you know? And this comes from this commercial I saw where this guy was having this inner monologue, and he's like, oh man, it seems like a really special girl. Man, how do I impress her? I could show her that I'm a big spender, or I could, I could spend money on this 20-piece McNuggets for $4.99. She'll think I'm a really like frugal spender. It's like, no, she's not gonna think that. Like, her thought was like, oh god, I just blew this guy in the fucking car because I thought we were going to Mario Batali's new restaurant, but I'm sitting here with some asshole in a trucker hat eating chicken bites. He's telling me about how, you know, oh yeah, you remind me of my ex-girlfriend, but he needs that as a compliment, so apparently that's okay. Whatever. You know what, I'll, I'll leave you guys on this and I'll get it out of your hair. And uh, cause we got a couple more comics left and they're really funny. Um, I, uh, I saw a Klansman the other day. And <laughs> that was a bummer. Uh, and, and what baffles me is like, seeing a Klansman in 2012, it's, it's really weird because you see them in the history textbooks, you know, they look really scary and menacing. You know, there's like fire in the background and like dinosaurs, lasers and shit. Like, you know, you're like really scared of them. But seeing a Klansman in 2012, it's a lot like, you know when it's tax season? And you see that, uh, you see that, you see that person dressed as the Statue of Liberty, and they're like, hey, get your taxes done here. And it's like, yeah, they're dressed as the, in the fucking costume, but it looks really sad and pathetic. And they're like, they just got this dead stare in their eye, you know, it's like some dude trapped in a shitty marriage or something. It's like, I'm not even racist, I just put on this ghost costume with the eye holes cut out because I'm just trying to hide away from my wife. <laughs> Fuck. Just put on some Martha Stewart lens, guess I hate black people today. Shit. Gonna have to open up my racist cupcake shop. Call it cake, cake, cake. <laughs> and no, we do not serve chocolate. Anyway, McCormick, thank you for letting me try out new stuff. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. We're Pony Robert Chandra and everybody. the door as of right now. Thank you for sticking around. We are in the home stretch. Are you excited for your next comedian? <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging it. Your next comedian, apparently, like Homer Simpson, is banned from several shopping centers. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Chris Martin. Always nervous when I do stand-up comedy. I'm nervous, more nervous than Mitt Romney's family dog. <laughs> when he realizes they're going on another Canadian vacation. Mitt's not worried if the dog falls off the family car roof because he figures he can always use the hide for sacred underwear. I don't know about you, but I wear Victoria's Secret sacred underwear or I wear no sacred underwear at all. Problem with underwear bombs, the skid marks. <laughs> Barack Obama has promised to be even harder on terrorists in his second term than in his first. His new campaign slogan, the chicken in every pot and a drone strike on every village. <laughs> He's going to fire Bo the Portuguese water dog and hire Mo the CIA waterboarding dog. He's even promised to hunt down and kill hope and change. <laughs> Barack Obama campaign is selling Barack Obama dildos to raise money. They're long on promises and short on delivery. <laughs> Hillary Clinton wrote a book called It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. She has a new, village, a new book out called It Takes a Drone Strike to Wipe Out a Village. She went to India and wore a bracelet promoting the war against sex trafficking, 
He said, real men don't pay for sex. Bill Clinton wore a bracelet that said, real men don't pay for cigars. A lot of you may not know this, but the founder of, Mus of the Muslim religion, Muhammad, had a nine-year-old wife, which means while she was chowing down on Happy Meals, he was chowing down on her vagina. <laughs> while she was getting into My Little Pony, he was getting into her little vagina. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Muhammad. Muhammad who? Muhammad, Chris Hansen wants to talk to you. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus who? Miley Cyrus who's too old for Muhammad. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? The Olsen twins. The Olsen twins who? The Olsen twins are too old for a Muhammad sandwich. <laughs> someone found a finger in an Arby's sandwich. In other news, someone found two penises in a Kim Kardashian sandwich. <laughs> you can now buy a Justin Bieber singing toothbrush for $9.95 from Walgreens. This means you and Selena Gomez can have Justin Bieber in your mouth. <laughs> I want to be the first man to put his penis in a VCU football cheerleader's vagina. Because that would be the Richmond equivalent of being the first man on the moon. Once I get my, when am I going to get my freaking light here? It just goes on. Thank you. Thank you. My minister keeps telling me to be more like Jesus. So next week I'm going to go down to Jeff Davis Highway and hang out with the prostitutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Chris Martin. Welcome back to the stage. We're your host, your MC, your Rakhani Ramachandran. Thank you. Chris Martin, everybody. Put your hands together for Chris Martin. Your next comedian coming to the stage recently won crowd favorite at the Richmond Funny Bone. Please put your hands together for Clay Show. Do it.